What's up you guys, it's me B. Riley. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna take a look at what I feel in my opinion is one of the single most beautiful designs that Fender ever put down. This is the Offset Jazzmaster Jaguar line. And we're gonna be looking at two specific examples today. But more than anything, we're gonna focus on one of them in particular. And the reason we're gonna focus on it is because it shouldn't play as good as it does. The irony behind the modern world as far as guitar manufacturing is, is that once upon a time, cost essentially dictated quality. But at this point in time, that doesn't matter anymore. At this point in time, it's gotten to the point where you could spend $190 on a guitar and have a plate just as good as something that's worth a thousand bucks or more. So let's go ahead and take a look today at the Squire J Mascus. Now this one's got a couple modifications on it, so it might not look like it's straight out of the box. The anodized guard is gone. We're going in favor of a tortoise shell. And on top of that also, the pickup's been swapped out. We have a mastery bridge. But those just slight modernization and upgrades, kind of like a classic car with disc brakes on it. Just makes it a little bit more user-friendly, makes it a little bit more versatile. Anyway, let's go ahead and plug this thing, have a listen to it, take a look around, and talk about the kind of quality that this thing is gonna offer you. when you're listening to it you can hear that there's a lot of depth in there now as far as the specs on this as was mentioned before the mastery bridge has replaced the stock unit which on offsets is kind of a given I mean it's the first place you go to I'm not picking on them or nothing like that but bridge technology was pretty limited back then and Fender was dealing with a lot of stamped parts that when they got together they didn't really ever get together the mastery bridge is one of those mods that I really do endorse uh, I've seen people do a lot of different mods to guitars that I didn't feel any had any real tonal contribution and I saw people spend a lot of money uh, doing the same exact thing and I, I had quite a few people coming to me and asking me to do modifications that I had to in earnest 
tell them that I didn't feel it was going to give them any seat of the pants difference. The Mastery Bridge is one of those exceptions where this thing really does transform the character of the guitar. Not in a way in which it alters it uh, irrevocably, but instead just in a way that it tightens it up, knocks all the rattles out, and just makes it a little bit more confident feeling when you're on stage. So you're not sitting there fighting this thing and being like, why can't I get this thing to stay in tune? Or why is it giving me all these buzzing noises? Or where is that buzzing noise coming from? Now, admittedly, as we had mentioned before, when we did the SG shootout, it's kind of tough when you're on video to kind of objectively listen to tones uh, without a companion tone, without something to compare it against. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually gonna go ahead and plug in a guitar that belongs to a really good musician here in town, uh, who's with a band called the Strawberry Moons. And we just finished this thing up for him and it's a full scale Jaguar. So it's a jazz master with all the Jag stuff. Why are we putting a full scale against a full scale? couple reasons. Number one, the Squire is off the line. It's an imported model that is just a production model and it is made with efficiency and cost in mind. The other guitar is not made with efficiency and cost in mind. It has nitrocellulose refinish, it's got nickel plated parts, it also has a mastery bridge, and it has Seymour Duncan antiquities sitting in the pickup positions. Now for all intents and purposes, that guitar should be able to light off the Squire pretty easy. So I want to go ahead and plug it in, have a listen to it, see what you guys think about it. So now that we've had a chance to kind of listen to them both and uh, and play them back to back, you know you can hear that the that the jag has just a little bit more mids. It kind of pushes up through the center of the signal. Uh, I didn't change the amp settings on that amp or any of those pedals at all. So we have a straight across one against the other, same exact setup. So yeah, we can hear a little bit more mids, and the jag has a little bit more playability. It's a different neck profile. Um, you know, so there's going to be some variations there. There's going to be just preferential variation. However, a couple things about the J-Mascus that I greatly appreciate before we get into the nitty gritty. Now, this one has had fret work done. It was done before it came to me. I can see a couple of subtle marks on the fretboard where they rolled it off, and I can see a couple marks on the frets where they were trying to get that water drop shape towards the end. And uh, they didn't hit it hard enough to really create a sculptured end of the fret but they did hit it hard enough to do the job. The neck is very, very comfortable. I was playing a Squire Jazzmaster about 10 years ago for a little bit. You know, it was a student model that came through and I was using it for work. And uh, it was terrible. It was the worst neck I had ever played. The frets were rising in weird places. There were low spots. It buzzed everywhere. It rattled everywhere. This guitar was almost unusably bad, even after a really thorough setup. This is not the same animal. I don't know where they made that thing, but this thing was not made in the same place. The work on the frets 
looks like it was pretty good already, and whoever was working on it was really just bringing it up to an elevated level. Uh, the pickup that was replaced, funny enough, uh, Jay, the cat who owns this, has told me straight up that the stock pickup is more than sufficient, and as we were just playing it, when you see me switching between bridge and neck, you really don't pick up too much of a difference. The pickups have a really great uh, soft contrast between them. It's not like a Strat where you're on the bridge and it's real pingy and then you're on the neck and it's that wooly overblown Hendrix uh, you know, style tone, which I love, but doesn't always have a place on stage and isn't always very usable because um, you know, if you've got two guitars on stage, it's pretty crowded. You know, so in that case, these pickups are fantastic. The Mastery Bridge, like we were talking about before, knocks out all the rattles. And uh, I like the Tortoise Guard on these. I know that the Anodized Guards are really pretty, and they look great when they're worn out. But there's something about having just brand new Anodized Guard and brand new white guitar. You're playing this thing on stage, and you're going to blind everybody in the front row. Um, the Tortoise Shell is kind of nice. It adds a bit of contrast. Even though it's not a tonal contributor, it looks really, really good. But this is the part that I really, really like. When I was talking to him when he dropped it off, I thought this was a refinish. There are parts of the finish that are very, very thin. There's a little blemish on the back where a previous person doing a repair knocked it, scratched it, and then they filled it in. And you can see the finish is very thin on this. They use a really good quality shielding paint. They're not using any of the foil or anything like that. It's just very well constructed. The neck joint is excellently fit. The fit and finish there is easily above Fender America levels 1974, 1978. Now, if you guys watch the channel, you know that I don't put down those guitars. I see a great deal of value in those guitars. And I like them. They're funky, they're weird, and they're accessible in a vintage market. But they do have monumentally huge pocket gaps. They are very valuable. So if you're touring with them or doing shows with them, there's a little bit more of a risk element there. And uh, you know, you're gonna have to watch where you're putting your case and stuff like that. Last but not least on this, and this was the part that really threw me when I was looking at it, other than the fact that it plays fantastic and the neck has an excellent profile, and it's got a, uh, a matte finish, amber tinted neck, which could be very easily just buffed out and you would have a gloss neck, no problem. It's kind of one of those deals where they let you choose, you know, type of thing. And I like that, it's really great. I love that Fender and Squire are starting to get back to, you know, letting you build your own beast, letting you get a dream guitar out of it. Because even if it says Squire on the headstock, this thing plays awesome. And I'd play this thing on stage all day and all night, I'd do it with a smile on my face. Anyway, I digress. What I meant to talk about was this. That on this, and this is the only Squire, the only Fender, including quite a few custom shops that I've seen do this. And this is a bargain basement, you know, price guitar. This thing is very, very cheap. But the thing that I noticed on this is, is that there are no CNC lines on the top and the bottom of the guitar. You know, you look at a Strat, not a telly so much because the radius on a telly is, is super sharp on the edge. But you look at a Strat or you look at uh, a Mustang, anything that's contoured, you know, anything that's got that, those soft edges so you can stand on stage and not stab your own ribs, they always have a line that goes around the perimeter of the guitar. You can see where the CNC was cutting it and then all of a sudden it drops off to the radius. And it's just a very clear line. And I always hated that because if you look at the guitars of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the elemental component of having a human sand these things after they've been cut has a tendency of rounding off these edges and it gives you this great sculpted look where the body is able to really sing out into its design instead of looking like something that just popped out of a mold. This looks like something from 1963 where the body would be chucked out and whoever was working the line would take this thing and start hand sanding it to get it all cleaned up. But the variability between work meant that some of them became particularly sculpted and some of them had a slightly harder edge. You see strats from 63 to 65, you realize the horns look a little thinner, a little smaller. There's been a lot more material taken off. And even though it's only topical, that topical material being removed gave it more of a, a sculptured uh, artisan look, you know, uh, kind of the concept with which that the builders intended it to look like, like a concept car, where the fit and finish is really, really good, and there's all this subtle nuance that gives you a very good idea that uh, whoever was putting it together was making it personal and doing it until it looked right, which I really, really like. So this guitar doesn't have that, and I literally, the, the day that it got dropped off, I was like, I don't think that's the stock body, but when I opened it up, it totally was. This is just one of those rigs 
where you realize, and I know that I've said this twice now in a month, so I don't want people to think that I'm taking it too easy on Fender or Squire right now, but I have had the Sonic Mustang, which came through a couple weeks ago, and then this one, and both of them were just exemplary guitars for the price. It's to the point where you don't even look at the headstock. You don't care where it's from. You just know that it's here now and it sounds really, really good. Anyway, a glowing review for the J-Mask Esquire. These things are fantastic. And you know what? I love that you can get these now for a reasonable price. When I was about 12, 13, I wanted an Olympic white Jazzmaster more than you could ever know. But none of the shops carried them. And the Made in Japan ones were only just starting to make their way over to the United States. And they were very costly. Sometimes eleven dollars or $1,200. And this is 1995 money. Big, big bucks. And you'd only find one in an entire guitar center or an entire Sam Ash. And if you tried to get something with a different color, a different model, it was really, really tough. Those guitars were brilliant. Fantastically constructed. The MIJ stuff is sometimes unequaled. And other than the double thick poly that they use, they stomp all over every other manufacturing facility around the globe. But this guy ain't far off. And it ain't far off for a whole lot less money and you can find him everywhere. So if you are looking for an offset and you're looking for a Jazz or a Jag, I would suggest this. The Jazz Master, the J Mascus model, fantastic. Really, really great player. Just a happy player. Some guitars, you know, you play them and they just want to keep getting played and they want to just keep getting brought up on stage. You know, they're like puppies that are willing. They just want to chase the ball for six hours straight. And that's this guy, just a little pissed off Rottweiler of a guitar. Fantastic tones, great sparkling clears, no overt hum, even with tons of fuzz on it and no noise gate. To have P90s like that, where I've got fluorescence all over the house running, and this thing is not kicking out any of the, you know, the 60 cycle jazz, that's not bad. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. The videos are going to be coming a little bit more uh, fast and furious later. Uh, we have had a lot going on the last few weeks. And just as you can see there, that Jag took up a lot of bandwidth in my brain. So unfortunately, some of the videos got pushed back. Every once in a while, you just got to get in there with a screwdriver and a bunch of tools and get it done quick and get it done right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next week. We're going to be peering into a little bit more vintage weirdness because, you know, it's me. <laughs> and I love that stuff. And hopefully you guys love it too. Anyway, have a beautiful afternoon and I will see you guys next week.